What's up, guys? Sumner Healy. I'm coming at you guys with kind of an interesting video. This is going to be a very raw, open, honest video. Not a whole lot of editing. Editing. And what I'm going to show you guys, we're not going to we're going to leave that one in. What I'm going to show you guys is some of those kind of superpowers that we've been using, or unfair advantages that we've been using uh, on the marketing side to really increase our ROAS. Right. So talking about if I put a dollar into my marketing, how can I get more in the back end? Uh, typically what we see for new Leah members is maybe a one to 10 ratio, $1 in, $10 out. It's one of the reasons that land is, is such an awesome uh, business to be in, right? But you can make it even better than that. In fact, we've got people that are getting close to a 30X ROAS, $1 in, 30X return, and that's just for direct mail, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how we're doing that. I'm gonna show you guys how we're trimming our marketing costs way, 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 way down, like 30 to 50%, and also getting a better ROAS, of course, they're related, um, and how we're trimming our days on market. Like this is not the hottest lay-in season we've ever been. It's not bad, but it's not you know, COVID crazy. Um, yet we still have uh, many, many folks, including ourselves, that are selling most of our deals in under 30 days. And it's not by a coincidence. In fact, we've had many people go from you know, like a 90 day average days on market down to 14, 15, 16, 17, or, or 30. I mean, it's pretty drastic changes. I'm gonna share with you guys how we're doing all that. It's gonna be raw. We're gonna go select a market together. We're gonna to go do a bunch of things. And we're really gonna show you this process from cradle to grave. Um, now, before I do, just a couple of announcements. Um, if you guys wanna get a purchase agreement, it's free. Uh, you can head over here, landinvestor.co slash PA. Uh, go swipe it, what we've been using for years and it's 100% free. Now, I'm not gonna BS you. What we share here today will be utilizing Land Insights, but I wanna preface. You do not need land insights to do what I'm going to show you. Okay. We are going to be using it, but don't be misconstrued. It's not, it's, it's not a make or break. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. It's going to save you a lot of money because eventually if you want to do the stuff that we're doing here at scale, you need a team and that team for market selection and all the data stuff we're going to talk about, is going to cost you thousands of dollars a month. So there's a tipping point where it makes sense. If you guys do want to apply, you can go to app.landinsights.co slash register. One thing I just want to preface, there is a pretty long survey that you have to fill out before you even have the opportunity to join Land Insights, okay? The reason being is if you're a brand new land investor, don't get Land Insights. It's not the tool for you. It's the wrong place, okay? You got to be doing at least a deal or two a month to justify Land Insights. It's not something that you need to start with out of the gates. Of course, I'm. you think I'm biased, but I'm really telling you from the bottom of my heart, we see people that, that, that fill out these forms that have no business using Land Insights, okay? So if you're brand spanking new, maybe you can watch this video, learn a few things, but I don't want to, to misconstrue that you guys absolutely need this or it's a necessity. Now, if you are doing one to two deals a month and you want to shorten your days on market, you want to reduce the time spent on marketing and pricing and finding uh, the, the right counties or zip codes to work in, um, and you want to make more on your marketing than Land Insights is a tool for you. Now we do a launch model, which means that we we open up seats kind of sporadically. So I think we've got about 20 seats left currently um, before that launch closes out. And then it'll be closed for what, however many months, a quarter, or maybe a little bit longer than a quarter. Um, there will be a cap on the total number of seats. So this is an, an evergreen tool where we'll, we'll, we'll have thousands of people using it. Again, it's a detriment to our growth, but I think at a certain tipping point, I think the number is pretty big. There is a reduction in the value for members. So we keep a really close eye and we're really slow to add new seats because that's the worst case scenario. Now, it would take, I think, in excess of a thousand people using the tool. We're very, 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 very far away from that. And even that, I think, is conservative, right? There are some markets in the land space that have been just used and abused from, from decades of coaches pointing people into the Mojave counties and the Costillas of the world. These places that should not still deliver yield on marketing because it's too competitive. And yet we see that acquisition still hum along. In fact, where we see competition really in the land business currently, this, this could change over time, of course, but initially I feel like you really feel on the dispo side. So for example, in a Costilla County, it's still really easy to acquire land. In fact, I challenge you, go send out 5,000 letters. I guarantee you, you'll get multiple deals and maybe even you know a dozen deals, right? Uh, it still delivers the goods, even though it's been used and abused and picked over. The problem is in a market like that, there's only so many buyers. In fact, there's way more supply of active inventory than there is buyers. And so that's where some of the, the margins start to compress because people have to race down on price if they want that quick turnaround. Or if you don't want to compress your margin, you just got to wait a long time. Right. And this is where most people are doing land wrong because they pay no attention to picking the right markets and they just get absolutely steamrolled. You either have to just seriously drop price or 
uh, wait a whole heck of a long time, which we don't want to do that, okay? Um, all right, guys, let me share my screen. I have another computer down here, so if I'm looking away, just know I'm still here. Uh, we've got two computers that we're using today. Um, so two, there's two tools that we're going to use here today, okay? We're going to be using uh, Land Insights, of course, and we're going to be using Data Tree. So this is the what Land Insights this is the V2 version of Land Insights. When we first built this tool, it was built on top of Tableau. It was really ugly. Shout out to all the OG Land Insights members that have, have been with us. And there's been a really, really just incredibly loyal uh, user base for Land Insights. We do uh, monthly calls for everyone, so we do. A monthly kind of team marketing call where we talk about the, the platform but also like what's working in the marketing sense um really it's a it, it's, there's kind of a community aspect to it that i just don't think you'd find on any other tool so we meet the first tuesday of every month uh everyone that joins that insights gets an onboarding call with our team so we show you exactly how to use the tool again we just kind of give you the nitty-gritty on marketing and so there's a there's a real education and kind of community component that I think is lacking in almost every piece of software out there. This is a complex tool too. There's a lot we can do with this tool. And so if you don't know how to wield it correctly, eh, I don't think it's I don't think it's in your best interest to get it. And that's the problem with new land investors. If you haven't even mastered the basics, now we get people that 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 fill out uh, call forms to, to talk to the team on the Leah side that want to join Leah, and then unfortunately they've been kind of roped into our market and they say, you know what, I haven't done a deal yet. I'm going to pause on the education. I'm going to get land insights. And that should point me in the right direction. No, okay. If you don't know the basics, if you haven't if you haven't built the foundation, land insights is frankly useless to you. Okay, you've got to walk before you run. If you haven't done consistent deals for six months plus every single month, you're not consistently marketing. I don't even want you to, to think about land insights. Now, again, you can still mimic the strategies we do here. I don't want it. so it's not just predicated on land insights. Anyways, um, I want to show you guys something cool. We just, we've been adding shipping new features like every week or every two weeks. And we have a, fe a feature request form that we just get a ton of feedback on. I and mean, we get multiple feature requests every day. And we listen to them and we implement probably about three quarters of all the feedback requests. One thing that's really cool is we just on these maps here, this is our heat mapping section. Uh, we just added all the major cities on the map, which is kind of cool. Also check us out, I'm gonna refresh this page. That map loads so fast, so fast. There's a lot of data stored in here, okay? Um, so we're gonna start on the county level. We can use this for zip codes or counties. You guys can see we can kind of uh, go from zip code to county. I like to start with county. One of the cool things about zip codes is it allows us to break things down into smaller increments and typically find uh, more homogenous pricing. Now, inside of Land Insights, we've got something called the Genie Index. This is kind of like a statistical, um, a ruler, if you will, with the lower the number on that that, that grade, uh, the more homogeneous prices. The higher the number, it's going to be zero, well, zero to one hundred. Um, the, the the more all over the map pricing is. And so, one of the big pickles that we see with land investors is like they spend all this time selecting markets. Right, we're really meticulous. That's why we have such an edge compared to other land investing coaching programs or just other land investors because we're so meticulous with the market selection and it pays huge dividends. But what happens is you spend all this time picking a great market and then you pull the data and you say, this isn't priceable. How the hell am I going to break this up? Now, inside of Leah, there's three strategies that we teach to break down markets into homogenous pockets. One's our subdivision strategy. The next is our polygon strategy. The next is our acreage range strategy. Now with Land Insights, there's kind of a fourth and that's our zip code strategy. Um, zip codes weren't just designed randomly. Um, there's, there's actually a good amount of thought that goes into zip codes. And usually you'll find just in a smaller area, of course, there's less chance for price to be very for it to, for it to be variable. So uh, we just find that we'll go look at the counties that have really high demand, and then we can start parceling that county out into these little zip codes and just find really, really easy pricing that makes our job so much easier. And inside Land Insights, we get to see all that pricing data. So I can go find the, the markets that have the best demand, that, are, that have the least amount of competition, that haven't been picked over, that no one really knows about. Then I go make sure uh, it's got the kind of inventory I want, which I'll show you guys that here. And then we can start breaking that down by zip codes and finding the zip codes that have a low genie index. And then we can go use that median price inside the land insights and just pull that in, price it, send that puppy out. Now for context, anything under a 40 for a genie index is, is pretty darn good. Uh, anything under a 20 is like really, really homogenous. Just see what that looks like here today. Although I think we're gonna be pulling uh, counties to start with. Okay, so here we're gonna select our acreage range and we're gonna select what's showing up on the heat map, okay? I'm gonna do one year sell through rate. Sell through rate is kind of our, our flagship term inside of Leah. We're just taking that on market active listing inventory and dividing it by a one month, three month, six month, 12 month list of comps and finding a percentage. Okay. This is something that we coined 
uh, when we first started Leah. And it really kind of, it, it just makes the decision making for picking markets a whole heck of a lot easier, okay? So you'll see right here, I'm looking at the 0.2 to 100 acres. That's a really wide spread. That's fine. But one of the things that we teach people inside of Leah is to pick their land investing avatar, okay? It makes your life a lot easier. My land investing avatar is more kind of in that rural recreational thing, right? So I'm more of honestly like a five to a hundred acre guy. Okay? It's, I will do smaller deals, but it's really rare. It's not something that's high on my list, okay? Now you'll see the, 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 the darker blue or the purple, the colder these markets are, the more yellow it is, the hotter the market is. Now you can actually scroll down here and see all the lists as well. So if you like more of like a vertical list, you can use that. We're big, 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 big proponents of the heat map. I think visualizing this data is just so helpful. Um, now, of course, this stuff is fluid, right? This stuff is ever evolving. Markets are not static, so markets change and trends in the US change. For example, I would say during COVID, like um, Texas, uh, Arizona, Colorado, these markets were really, really hot. You can see now based off the heat map, they're not they're not as hot, right? That demand kind of moves. And it, it, look, it's like fashion, right? Some of the stuff is cyclical. It'll move back around. But what we find, you know, for example, a state like Texas is there was a huge surge during COVID and then all this inventory got listed. Everyone was trying to go get top dollar and the demand started to taper. And a lot of these counties just have so much inventory sitting out there, especially if we compare it to just a few years ago. Uh, it's not to say that Texas, you still can't sell land or any of those things. But this is one of the reasons that we, we want to always have our eye on the ball. We update this data uh, every two weeks. So it's just fresh data coming in from every MLS platform out there. Um, so it's just the most accurate, honest, up-to-date data you can find anywhere. And it always show, it shows us where the puck is going. And so we're way ahead of the, the curve here. And if you're if you're a cheap son of a gun, I mean, you can take a screenshot of this and look at this and even use this for your market selection to start kind of guiding your decisions. But I guarantee you a year from now, this map will look very different, even a few months from now. Of course, there's also a seasonality component. Right now that we're starting to move into the spring and the summer, these areas that are super far north in the U.S., are starting to wake up, right? They're starting to have more demand because you know, the frost is melting and it's not as cold and typically people don't want to buy land uh, when it's freezing cold. So this is one of the reasons that, you know, I think a lot of land investors just get skunked because they're, they're, they're years in the past on demand metrics, right? They saw that during COVID, Colorado was the place to be and they're still playing that game and that's fine. You can still make money. It's never a question of, can you make money in this business? It's what's optimal, what's most efficient? How do I get that the, the most leverage from the dollars going into marketing? And that's really all that matters in the land business. I don't care what anyone says. I don't give a hoot about my ROI on a deal by deal basis. It's kind of irrelevant, right? That's just the inventory passing through our business. What I care about is what is that multiple on what I put into marketing, what I get on the back end. And a lot of people in this business are fixated on the marketing channels and that's stupid <laughs> i'm just gonna be honest it's stupid okay i'm not saying that marketing channels don't matter and there are marketing channels that are better than others but people have forgot to win the top of the funnel the top of the funnel being the markets that we select the accuracy of our pricing the fact that we are always ahead of the puck and chasing these trends no one is doing that everyone's like well i'm gonna try cold calling now or yeah direct mail doesn't work so i'm gonna do uh, cold text it's like no 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 you haven't mastered the basics and so people think ROAS is just related to the marketing channel. It's related to the top of the funnel, which is our market selection and pricing, all that stuff. There's also a huge component to getting more yield from your marketing in terms of how you handle things, right? your acquisition process. I always, people always want to talk about how this is like a marketing and sales business, and it's true. But in my humble opinion, this is more of a sales business. It's a sales and data business. The marketing channels you use or how you show up to them is kind of irrelevant. I think depending on where you're at in your journey, there's some that make more sense than others. That's why we start all new Leah members with direct mail for a whole slew of reasons, but it all works. You just gotta be in the right markets. You gotta know how to underwrite deals and you gotta know how to talk to sellers. How you get in touch with them is not super important. And this is kind of the fallacy that most land investing coaching programs have fallen into. They always wanna teach you the new hot thing, the new hot channel, the da 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 da. And it just doesn't matter that much. Okay. Um, and look at and one thing I just wanna add as a caveat. Someone's gonna say, well, but they're going to get too competitive. And yes, marketing channels do get competitive over time for sure. But I think this is a higher impact lever to pull on than doing this musical chairs with always trying these new marketing channels. It's my humble opinion. And the fact that so many of these land investors are poo-pooing direct mail and no longer do it because it's too expensive, yada, yada, yada. And yet we're just dominating with direct mail shows me 
it's not so much about the the, the, the channel, right? But they say it's not the 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 arrow, it's the archer or something like that. Okay. Um, all right. So five to hundred acres, one year sell through rate. Um, and we're, look, at, we can pick. I mean, I can pick dozens of markets in like literally ten minutes. We're just gonna go and snag one here today. Um, now I could start with if I wanted to. Let's say I, I, I've got great realtors or I've got a great uh, title company or what have you uh, in a certain state. I can start with that as well, right? So, you know, let's just take, for example, um, let's try a state I've never worked in. Let's let's try Ohio, okay? So I can actually go and filter this by Ohio, apply, and now it's just going to show me Ohio. Um, and sometimes that's that's a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, a, I like making relative comparisons on a statewide basis. So I like to find the best counties and compare it to the state opposed to kind of looking at all of the US and you look at you can do that. But it's, it's just a little easier for my brain to handle because it's not it's such a variable comparison from place to place. The other thing is uh, one of the things that you'll find as you scale a land business is the resources that you have in a given market can be a huge part of your edge. And it's the thing that people don't tell you is like having a great realtor, a great title company, your photographer being vertically integrated in a market shaves off so much time from the whole entire uh, acquisition, mark, operation, dispo process, like it just makes everything so much more streamlined in your business, buys back a whole heck of a lot of time um, and can yield much better results, whether it's just shortening the days on market or having a realtor or a title company that's friendly to more um, nuanced <laughs> investor style uh, closing processes or creative deal structures that allow us to unlock value that otherwise we couldn't, okay? So don't sleep on the fact that as you're building roots in a market, that's actually a huge, huge value. And sometimes that's a better value than going and finding the number one hottest county in the US, right? So let's say you've got the resources in Ohio, I would choose a slightly more subpar county, if you will, relative to the whole US, if I got those resources there. Now I have no resources in, uh, in Ohio, but that you guys get the gist. Oops, looks like I zoomed in here. Whoopsies, uh, yeah, I'm so bad at it. So bad at this technology stuff. Um, okay, so Williams County, 75% on the one month now you can see this it gets really 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 misleading this looks like it's selling 75 percent of its inventory in a one month period but there's only eight pro properties that are actively listed okay one of our little tricks of the trade if you will um is we like to find markets that have between 25 and um about 250 uh active listings okay the too low of the number, your results get wacky, right? 75% sell through, but there's only eight properties actually listed. So of course the numbers are crazy. Too much supply and your properties just get forgotten in the shuffle, right? They just get lost once you list them. Now look, I always tell people inside of the end, those rules are meant to be broken, okay? I don't want you to, to you'd imagine there's only one way to do things, but in my humble opinion, this is what I've seen to be true and it's what I've seen to be true for hundreds of our members. So take it for what it's worth. Um, I'm actually going to go and put a little filter here. So I'm going to say it has to be greater than, uh, uh, let's do between, let's do between. Okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll make it so it's not so on the nose. I'll give myself a little, a little range here. Okay. So now we tighten these parameters up. So now we're only going to be saying things that are kind of more in our wheelhouse, right? Uh, um, Trumbull County, 35, 249. Okay. So 249% in one year. It's phenomenal right? The trend's pretty strong. The last one, one month wasn't the strongest, but it's okay. The genie's at a 35. So pricing seems pretty homogenous. Now you gotta, you've got to remember, we're looking at five to hundred acres. So the genie is helpful, but it doesn't really mean that much here. If I wanted to get an honest read on the genie, I would need to look at like the five to 10 acres. Okay. It's just too wide of a range um, to find accurate pricing. But the fact that it's at a 35 for five to hundred acres tells me if I come in and start chunking this down in smaller acreage increments, yeah, we're, we're, we're chilling. Um, so that was Trumbull. So I'm going to add that. It's going to go over to my My Market section. So I'm now going to add that to my list. Um, this one is not bad either. Do, 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 pending. That's one thing too. I like to look at the pending. This has got 23% pending. Yeah, that's not a bad. That's not a bad market either. Um, Ash Tabula. Heck. Where is it? Here we go. Not as strong as the last one we looked at, but it's, it's pretty darn good. Hmm, there's a lot that are trading here at 200% plus in the one year, which is interesting. Uh, 
three hundred percent. Now, what's interesting is that last the last month was was four percent, which is kind of interesting. There's twenty nine percent of the inventory is under contract. Now, I'm typically a guy that likes to look at the macro trend more so than what exactly happened just thirty days ago. It, the land is lumpy; it's variable. Weird shit can happen, right? So, I like to look at it from the trend. But if I see that the one month is soft and the pending soft, that's kind of a conflicting signal, even if the trend is strong. But we've got 30% of the inventory under contract currently. The last one month was at 4%. You know, it doesn't worry me that much. The trend outside of the last one month has been really, really strong. The genie's unbelievably low at a 20. Um, and frankly, that, that might be our winner, to be totally frank here. Um, we just looked at that. Guernsey. Super strong. Wow. God, there's a, there's a lot of good markets here. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Um, and one thing I will tell you, look, if you're one of those people that watches this video and just says, hey, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do the markets. That's something I did. You're a ding dong. Okay. You got to think for yourself, right? Business is a game of critical thinking. If you can't think clearly and make your own decisions and you're riding on the coattail of others, whether it hurts you here or not, I, don't, I can't say, but long-term that mindset will hurt. In fact, that's one of the reasons that I think so many land investors don't have the results that they want to have. Is they're the kind of cat to go on land.com, see where others are working, go throw it some mail because somebody else is working. And that's their decision making process. And what business can you play the game of follow the leader and be successful or be really successful? Maybe you can be a little successful. I don't know. Uh, that seems just kind of crazy to me. So don't don't be that person. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So um there's more, there's honestly there's there's more interesting markets here. I think the Guernsey was my was kind of my clear winner on this one. Um, where was Guernsey? This one right here. I, I like Guernsey. Um, so let's go take a look at it here. Okay. Uh, what I want to go look at. So we broke this up by five to a hundreds. I want to go look at again the one year STR. I want to start kind of chunking this down. Okay. So if I start breaking this down into smaller increments here. So you can see the five to ten acres is at a seventeen on the genie. Um, 10 to 20 to 20 on the genie. So again, because that five to hundred was so low, I have a really strong feeling that all of this is gonna be pretty low, um, but I just wanna go and spot check here. Uh, at a 14, super low. Now, one thing that you'll see in land is as the acreage range increases, as it gets bigger, as the properties get bigger, the actual variance in price is gonna calm down a little bit. Now, one thing that I can do here is I can go to my tool tip and I can just go and look at the one year median um, and I can look at the average days on market as well. So this is just adding this to my tool tip. So you'll see when I hover over now, now I've got some additional intel. So when I'm looking at the 20 to 40 acres, the median price in the last year is 209%. Now the genie's at a 14, so there's not much variance there. I'm not saying that you want to just play the ball of the, or just go, go in blindly, but maybe you could just go pull the median price and make an offer at a discount relative to that. I mean, the, the pricing's so homogenous. It says the average days on market's 180, but I find that I find that hard to believe. I just think there's such a small amount of inventory that's listed here that's kind of spoofing the numbers a bit. So that's my hunch. Look at five to 100, 142. Start breaking this down, 94. So my hunch is there's, there's going to be average days on market. Let's go back to this tooltip pull up. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Junior one month, six month. Uh, I want to go look at, I also want to go look at the pending, median pending price. Let's add this to our tool tip. So pending is at 150. It's a high price market. And again, land that's simply more expensive is going to be a little slower to move. I, I want to go and look at this on Redfin. I have a hunch that there's going to be a lot of stagnant inventory that was just poorly listed. So this is Guernsey. Cannot spell apparently. Okay. Well, with the magic of editing, I just disappeared, got myself a coffee. Hopefully, you guys didn't have to wait too long. Third cup of coffee, I should probably be careful. But we got a lot of ground to cover here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go look at uh, this market here. Um, we also just released. A, it's not, I don't have it on this computer here, but we just released a free Chrome extension 
um, for Redfin's The Land Insights Chrome extension. Hopefully I'll have a link to share with you guys uh, before this video gets published. If not, I'll share it inside of our Discord, landinvestor.co slash Discord. Um, that gives some really cool pricing information on Redfin. One of the things it does too, which is really nice, when you come on Redfin, it auto selects land for you. So you don't have to do this little silly whole clicking phenomenon that's just really, really, really annoying. Um, all right, so what I, want, what I want to go look at is I want to look at how much stagnant inventory there is out here. Uh, because I'm kind of surprised at um, some of the days on market are showing me, but I think it's being dragged down by some just some really poorly listed inventory. Um, let's see. So you can see there's actually not much inventory out here that's well marketed, well priced. Well, I don't know what the pricing yet, but there's a lot. So there's a lot of this like subdivided kind of junk inventory that just doesn't seem to be in demand. A lot of the listings are really, really poor. So while there's a while it seems like deals do move out here, it does seem like there's a pretty big discrepancy on marketing uh, quality of properties that are bringing the market. I mean, look, look at how many of these country club estates are listed here. It's just it's silly. None of these properties are well marketed. I mean, this, is, this is a picture of a patch of grass. This is too. I mean, people, you should be fired. If you're a realtor and you take photos like this, you should you should be fired. I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just so, it's just so lazy. And you know it doesn't work. If it was working, you'd be selling deals. <laughs> uh, it's just so, so, so silly to me. Uh, okay, so that kind of gives me a hunch. Uh, it just seems like, yes, there is demand in this market, but there's very, 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 very little in terms of properties that are well positioned, well marketed. Let me go see the stuff that was selling. Let's go look in the last year. Um, and local rules required to be signed in. What's this mean, huh? Uh, most recently sold. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, man, all this inventory is just so ugly. Man, I don't understand what people are smoking up. Anyways, um, for the sake of time, we are going to roll with this market here. Now, one thing that I'm going to sidestep in this uh, this video here, because it just would make pretty boring content, is I would start actually breaking this stuff down and trying to figure out price, right? So I know I want to attack, really, I'm probably going to attack five to infinite acres. And I wouldn't just stop at 100 more than likely. But let's say I'm going to the five to 100. I would actually start breaking this down and getting some price intel just to just to figure out that, just to confirm my hunch that it is priceable. Um, you know, Land Insight said, yes, this is certainly priceable. It's within our wheelhouse of what we would consider priceable for blind offers or however you want to send it offers. I would just come here and download this data as a CSV and I just do a few spot checks. I, I really wouldn't need it to, to do it for every single one because we've got that data in Land Insights. You've got the median price, you've got the price break, like you've got everything you really need there, both on the whatever time frame you want to do on the one month, the pending, the 12 month, the six month, you've got all of that data at your fingertips. You've got the Genie Index, but I still like to cross-reference, I like to spot check. Uh, so I'm going to go and export this, pull up into a CSV, and start crunching some numbers. Um, what I would do is I would remove the outlier. So you're going to find there's a lot of listings here that are just, they're either just too weird, like this skinny, tiny little lot, or they're just too nice, right? We typically buy the stuff that's right in the middle. We don't buy the worst properties. We don't buy the nicest properties. We're somewhere in the middle. So I do like to remove those outliers. Sometimes you'll see people that list a swamp, and I'm not in the business of buying swamps. Same thing, you'll see people that list a property that actually has a house on it they just listed it incorrectly so we like to remove those um and i'll go look at that low to price to the high price i don't want to see typically more than like 100 percent delta from the low to high again hard rules i'm not trying to tell you you can or you can't which is what i found to be a kind of a helpful guide so we're going to sidestep that because it's really really boring it's really simple again all you're going to do is go download as a csv go sort from low to high Go look at the outliers. Go look at the lowest comps and go look at the highest comps and go see, is there a reason why they were low or high? If there's a clear reason that doesn't relate to the middle of the road property is in a property, it's got a septic system, it's got a well, it's got a small hunting cabin. Like, that's not typical. And so those are not the typical properties that we should be making typical pricing off of, right? Um, so I'm gonna spare you guys the, the boringness of that, but we are gonna go and actually pull the data here. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys something really, really cool too. So stick around. I'm going to show you how we're shaving our marketing costs down by a huge margin, by like 30 to 50%. How we're buying back our time or our team's time. So we're only talking to the kind of leads that we want to talk to and how our ROAS is getting up into 15X, 20X, 25X, all through how we massage our data. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some pretty nifty stuff. So um, let's go and I'm just going to go and search this here real quick. Um, so we just, for the sake of simplicity here, again, there's a lot of counties 
just off that whatever 10 minute search there's a lot of counties i could attack in fact these are pretty rural counties. I don't know if the zip code breakdown is necessary here. If I went and pulled the, the county data like I was showing you guys, and then I recognize, holy smokes, this isn't priceable by acreage range, then I would start leaning on a zip code strategy. Then I, if that doesn't work, I start leaning on a polygon strategy. Then I would start looking at a, a subdivision strategy or I'd start marrying these strategies together. Right, maybe I'm breaking down the market through it with a polygon based off of geography, mountains, valleys, rivers, things like that, then applying like an acreage range filter to it, maybe even stacking zip codes. There's a whole lot you can do there. Okay. Um, so these are some of the kind of our classic filters that we use inside um, data tree. Uh, again, I'm gonna kind of go in the same vein as what I was searching here. I don't need to stop at the at the hundreds by any for any reason. Whoa, five to a hundred. Oh, it's <laughs> looking at the entirety of uh <laughs> of uh, Ohio. These are the filters that we typically use. Now I'm using the five to hundred just for the sake of simplicity, right? I, I will typically go well, well, well beyond a hundred because I stop there, right? I'm not, I'm not scared to buy a 500 acre, 200 acre, a thousand acre even. Uh, I see people that put these really hard glass ceilings on their, on their limits. I think that's silly, but I do put a floor. Five acres is not necessarily a rock bottom floor. Again, I massage this stuff. I'm not a robot. Okay, and there's, there's times where it makes sense based on the markets that we're in. So don't be a one trick pony, but you still want rules, right? And again, rules are meant to be broken. These are like, you're not gonna be able to live and die by these rules. In the beginning, you should live and die by these rules, right? At our mastermind here in Las Vegas last year, which is coming up this year, October 25th, 26th, 27th, it's gonna be bananas, 300 tickets, landinvestor.co slash mastermind. Uh, if you guys wanna go, it's gonna be a crazy, that's the link. Oh, we're already a good bit away sold out. We just released tickets like a week and a half ago, but we, we created these shirts called Surrender to the System. Okay, and that's one of our kind of our little adages. We've got a bunch of these quips inside of Leah. Uh, and that's one of our adages. When you're new, you're, you're following the system. We provide a very prescriptive business in the box, land investing franchise style uh, program that you just need to execute on. Now, as you start to develop a repertoire, as you start to, to kind of develop as a land investor and build skill, then sure, start getting cute, start kind of molding it to fit yourself, start questioning some of the things that we lay out because eventually those rules are meant to be broken, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna go through and explain all these filters, we explain those inside of Leah, but this is what we're gonna be using here. Um, so you can see there's 5,591 data points uh, for the county. I'm gonna export these. One thing that's important though, I'm not gonna, I, just for the sake of this video, I don't need the full 5,000. Um, I've actually already got data on this county. I'm really just kind of showing it for the sake of simplicity uh, and to show you guys kind of cradle to grave. So I really wish I knew how to spell this county. It's quite embarrassing to have this happen <laughs> live on camera. I'm usually decent at spelling, but man, I don't know why. That's a real, real tongue twister. Five to 100 acres. Uh, okay, so I'm going to remove duplicates here. Uh, we've got a little export folder here. So like I said, I don't need the full data set, okay? Uh, so once we remove duplicates, I brought it down to 3,243. And just for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna pull one to 100 out of that data set um, because I wanna show you guys how we massage the data. And frankly, it's gonna be a little boring and slow to go massage 3,000 plus records, okay? So cool, just got the data. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do, and this is where shit starts to get crazy, okay? This is where things really start to go bananas for your business. The stuff that I showed you here, easy enough, okay? I'm sure if you're brand new, you can kind of follow along. The land scrubbing features I'm gonna show you are gonna knock your sock off, socks off. And this is how we have folks like Anthony Reese that are making 200 plus thousand dollars their first year from seven grand in marketing spent. It's through this, it's through how we massage our data and how we only wanna take shots on goal. I only wanna spend marketing dollars where it's gonna be an investment, not an expense. It's an expense when you're marketing the properties that you would never even wanna to touch. It's an expense when you're marketing to duplicate owners. It's an expense when you're marketing to, 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 to potential avatars that would never sell to you like a children's nursery, right? It's also an expense when you're getting on the phones with these people that are a gargantuan waste of your time or your team's time. So this not only shaves our marketing costs, it also shaves the time spent by our team. It also changes the psychology of our team, right? I've, I've had dozens of people that have come and gone on our land investing team on that side of the business. And what I've seen is there's a real mental expense to be talking to leads that aren't a good fit. It takes the wind out of their sails. 
when someone on our team has to talk to 10 back-to-back -back leads that are crazy, that are screaming at us, that have properties that are you know, washes or ravines or things that we never want to buy, that actually really wears on their psychology. And what we found is when a good lead comes along, they're not in the right headspace because the wind has been taken out of their sails. So there's just so many compounded effects from what we're going to show you guys here. Okay. Um, now we've got this feature here. For some reason, I'm not allowed to say those words on YouTube every time I do. Uh, I get the video gets taken down. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that does, it essentially gives us, we've just pulled the ownership information from data tree. It gives us like who owns a property at mainly address, all that stuff. That's an added layer with phone numbers and emails and relatives information and age. And it just gives you a lot more intel. Um, and you can do that directly through a platform. There's no uh, minimum size, it's six cents per record, it's super affordable. And we cross reference pretty much every database out there. So it's the most accurate information. And we pull multiple, multiple, multiple relatives. And so what you'll find in some cases, there might be properties that have to go through probate, right? It's a good deal, it's a good property. And there might be motivation in the family but the person on title, uh, unfortunately, has passed away, right? Um, and so what happens is you have to take that property through probate, but you need to be working with the relatives to kind of get that process spearheaded. Uh, or in some cases, there's multiple decision makers, but the family members don't talk. This happens so often. And it's really unfortunate to see families with big rifts in them. And unfortunately, I've got kind of something similar on, on one side of my family, not necessarily because of me, but it's just, ge just generational rifts. And you find that a lot. We talk to a lot of people that own land that say, yeah, it's me and my sister or brothers or whatever, but we don't talk to each other and I refuse to call them. And so we got to step in and kind of play the role of family mediator. And what a lot of people don't realize is that this work is actually not that difficult and it yields huge rewards. And so that's another way where we can extract more value from our marketing dollars by being able to work leads from all angles where most people just aren't doing it. Okay. Same thing, we can go and get this all information. We can mail, we can, now that we have all that additional data, you can do text, you can do emails, you can do cold call. Like there's so many other marketing handles you can stack. And so now you're getting more list penetration. And this is really what we're working towards as most land investors. When you start, just get good at one marketing channel. No need to do everything, okay? In fact, I, I encourage you not to do that. Just, just master one and namely, I think it should be direct mail. But over time, what happens is you have all of this data and you're penetrating a very small amount of that list if you're just using one marketing channel. So now we start to get omnipresent. Now we start attacking these leads from all these different channels and we show up in different places, which actually builds trust and authority. But let's imagine that you, you know you need to go to the dentist and you're driving and you're heading into work and you see a radio ad or hear a radio ad rather and you say, oh, interesting, don't really think much of it. And when you leave work, you see a billboard with that guy's face and oh, that's the guy from the radio, man, he must be pretty good at what he does. Then you're scrolling on whatever TikTok, and you see a video ad for the same guy. You're like, oh my God, this is just crazy, man. This guy's everywhere. And then you see a TV commercial, whatever. It just, it builds a lot of authority. It's the same thing with sellers, right? It also allows us to reach people through different channels, right? Some people are more receptive through text than they are through direct mail and vice versa. Now, one interesting tidbit that we find is that the trust baked into direct mail is much higher than any other marketing channel. So that's a really interesting, just a little tidbit, especially when you're starting out and you've got no skill and no trust because you've got no reputation and no kind of catalog of experience to reference. The trust that's built into direct mail is a huge asset. It's one of the reasons we are such a believer in it. If you're brand new and you've got no skill and you're scared to talk to people and you call, cold call a seller, I don't care how motivated they are, you're most likely gonna scare them off because you're just not good yet. You just don't know how to speak the language, you're not confident. They're gonna ask you questions you don't know how to answer. A lot of that gets mitigated through direct mail. You just have a lot more authority when you show up in direct mail. So anyways, I'm rambling here. Okay, um, we're not going to go use this here, but we are going to start a scrub. So this is machine learning slash AI that is built into Land Insights. Um, everyone in Land Insights has access to it. I'm going to upload this data set here. We're going to click next. Um, so it's going to make me just, just make sure I'm verifying everything. Okay, so first name, last name, formatted. Street address, zip code, latitude, longitude, lot acreage. Yes, sir. It all looks good. Okay, so we already scrubbed the duplicates, but if you guys want, you can scrub the duplicates for free here. I know some data platforms don't do that for you. You guys can always do that for free. Um, now, currently for the landlock scrubbing, it's two cents a record, which is crazy affordable. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's just crazy. Uh, it would cost a VA, I don't know, 40 to $100 per 
per a thousand records and it would take them multiple hours like three to five hours uh, just to get a thousand records done so it's a lot more affordable price is going up so this isn't a forever price and for a land insights user you might as well scrub as much data as you can now the reason that is discounted um is because we are feeding the machine with data okay we are feeding it with the members data to figure out how to get better right now i'd say that this is as good as a va if not maybe a little bit better but we we want it to be 99.99999 percent accurate and we want it to be as good as possible and to do that we need to feed the beast we need to feed the machines we have it heavily discounted this will be six cents a record um which is still pretty much on par with what you pay for a va but there's no sourcing the person no training of the person um you don't have to wait for the person you don't like it's just it, every person you bring into your business adds complexity so you'll see how quick this is um, and frankly, this will be more accurate than any VA you could possibly hire. Uh, now there's gonna be additional scrubs that, that we are adding in like wetlands and flood zones and odd shape of topography and a bunch of different filters. They'll all be priced the same. There'll be a discount to bundle them together, a pretty hearty discount. We just added a really cool feature though, where we can scrub, start scrubbing some of this wetlands flood zone stuff really, really easily. And I wanna show you guys that. We've kind of turned this into a video game and it's, it's really quite interesting. So now it's going to ask you, since we said remove duplicates, which is free to do, it's going to say when, when deduplicating multiple records, do you prefer the larger parcel or the smaller parcel? I like the larger parcel. So if a gentleman owns a one acre or a hundred acre, I'm going to mark it to the hundred acre, but you could do either. Okay, that's just, just typically what we do. Um, okay, so total hours saved, 15 minutes. Uh, so top cost is $1.68. We scrubbed 84 rows and we're going to start scrubbing now. Um, and just we'll take uh, how many ranges it takes anywhere between I don't know a minute to five ten minutes max so we'll pause this video here and we'll come back all right guys so it's 11 40 11 47 that took about 90 seconds um got up had myself a quick bathroom break came back and it was done um, now of course this is a, a ginormous data set so it's something to, to take in consideration so let's go and view it um, okay, so it's really, really cool here. And this is where this kind of becomes uh, pretty frank, pretty freaking crazy. Uh, so what it does, right, we, we use our AI to go and scrub it out, but we still give you the ability to proof. And in your proofing, we just added this new feature where you can actually tag it, wetlands, flood zone, bad topography. And we've got all of this data as an overlay. Um, and you can also verify the land landlocked yes, no, right? Um, and you can just blow through this like a video game. And so this actually does create 100 percent accuracy now of course we want to get to the point where there's no human oversight but this is not something that's even even this within itself is a value let alone the fact that our ai does it you know 99 of it for you you still have the ability to have oversight now what's really cool here is you can export the only the clean results so non-landlocked you can export the entire data set and it'll be tagged landlocked not landlocked so if you want to keep landlocked properties and try to create easements or do whatever you want to do with them you guys can always get that data so it's not like we're just kind of you know bogarting that from you um so right now i can look at hey show me the only the bad properties right and we've got 22 properties where it's saying yeah this doesn't look right so you can see this one here this property is 100 landlocked so this is like this the tag is correct this one also 100 landlocked tag is correct um landlocked 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 this also got some wetland flood zone stuff going on on it landlocked well let's see this actually this is gonna be a hard one to tell because there is a road here now my hunch is this probably does have an easement this doesn't look like a county road but i'm gonna say Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one some love. I think that one was salvageable, and I would take a chance on that. Um, let's look at this. Yep, it looks landlocked. And so what what ends up happening here is we shave off about thirty to fifty percent of our data set that we no longer have to waste any marketing dollars on. Let's take a look at this. Um, now, of course, one thing that we can't verify are deeded easements that's very much a possibility um that's stored inside the the, the actual deeds so there's no way for us to pull that at scale 
you know, typically my rule of thumb is if it obviously has some kind of road to it and it's close to a county road, I'm willing to take a chance on it and still market to it. You know, people do cut roads in all the time where there's no legal access. So I'm looking for that physical asset access and I'll take a chance on it if it's there. Um, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That's something that we, once we actually get the lead back to us, we start probing further to verify if it does have any of these. Um, yeah, that's questionable. Um, and one again, one really interesting thing too is you guys can start removing through here the wetlands flood zone bad topography. So we just added this feature where you can actually scrub that out yourself. Again, there's no tool out there that even allows you to do this, <laughs> just this. And this is just the little the little addition. So you'll chop off about 50% of your marketing cost, only be taking shots on goal, only talking to the right leads, only buying deals that you want to do. And this takes minutes, you know, like really truly minutes. Um, we've got someone on our team that, that helps with this and proofs all these. I mean, we can blow through a thousand records in, in, in no time. And our accuracy with this manual oversight is 100%. We're very, very, very close to it. Now let's see this one. So you can see here, this is one where I'm going to say, look at, there is a road here. I don't know if that's a county road, but I'm going to say that's that's falsely landlocked. Um, that was the last one. Okay. Uh, that one to me looked like there was something, something good going on. Uh, okay, so with only road access, there's 64 properties. We had 20 that didn't meet our sniff test. Um, none of these, I mean, I, I could bang through these only road access ones and just see if there's any ones with some serious gargly goop on it that I wouldn't like. So I could just bam, I'll keep that. And now I can start looking if I want, I can start looking for really severe flood zones, really severe wetland stuff. No, I'm, I'm not scared of a little wetlands. I'm not scared of a little flood zone. Um, this one, I do not like that property. I'm getting rid of that one. I'm gonna get rid of that property too. So again, good road access. Yeah, it's got wetlands up here. I'm not too scared of that. Now something like this, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Severe flood zones, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I uh, do not wanna waste my marketing dollars on that. Um, bang, bang, bang. No, no. Okay, so this is interesting, right? We got, we, I don't like flood zones on the access points, also off of a major interstate. I, I'm out on that property. I'm out on this property. Uh, I like that property. Uh, I'm out on that property. Bang, bang, bang. Fine. Fine. Um, so yeah, guys, I mean, this is this is what we do and it's, it's, it's shockingly uh, expedient. And what we're working towards is we feed more data and is this will all be automated. And this will be automated for every search parameter that you want. You'll no longer have to have this uh, kind of additional human element to it. But again, I challenge you, try to do this without something like this and it's, it's borderline impossible or it just takes such an insane amount of time and it's such an expense. Now, if you're someone that doesn't care about having a really efficient marketing engine where you're only making offers and properties that you want and you're shaving marketing costs and you're making more in your marketing and you have a more efficient team, then this isn't for you. You can just take that spray and pray method, but that's outdated. That's old school. That to me is junior thinking. That's the kind of thinking where people say, oh, I'm just going to do spray and pray, but I'm going to try all these new marketing channels and that should remedy it. And that might remedy it for a bit, right? If you've got that first mover advantage and you're the first one person to start doing cold calling or whatever, sure, maybe there's a first mover advantage there, but it doesn't last long. These are the kind of advantages that you build the foundation on. Uh, like a, there's so few people doing this, right? Because it's hard, it's confusing. Also, so you know, so few people actually have access to land insights because we've done small launches of 25 seats at a time or 50 seats at a time. It's a very small quantity of people have access to this, and this this is capped. Right. So people can try to go and replicate this, but it's, it's almost impossible. The level of difficulty to create this is immense and very, 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 very few people will ever get access to this. This is an edge that's everlasting. And this is the gift that keeps on giving. Every two weeks we are shipping new updates, new improvements. I mean, it's just it's endless the amount of value that keeps on being increasing. We've never raised price on people and we never will raise price on people. 
Um, so one of the things I recommend if you're a Land Insights user, like this is like an NFT, like you lock in your seat and you never sell that. Thing. I wouldn't, I would never, because someone else is going to snag it and you're going to lose your spot in line. You may, may never get back in. And our pack has been to keep price equalized and then not be the game, to, not the, the game of just raising price on people. Um, look at if, if in 20 years from now, inflation's crazy and you know $500 a month is nowhere, is now worth $50 a month. All right, well, maybe I, I can never say never, but outside of inflation, we will, we will not be raising price. That's just not our goal. And so if you've got the opportunity to get in line and reserve your spot and, and save it, I, I would, because this is the this is the dividend that, that pays out more so than anything in the land business. And this is why we've got folks that are, you know, three months in the land, they join Leah, they get on Land Insights, and they're getting a 1% plus response rate. And we see this data because they join Leah, their first two campaigns are at a quarter percent or a third percent. They're usually about 90, 120 days in, they get land insights kind of level up. They're already doing deals, they're already doing marketing. So the first thing that they do, educate first and stack this on, right? If you don't know how to shoot a bow and arrow, don't go buy the nicest bow and arrow, okay? You don't even have your driver's license. You barely even have your permit yet. And you're trying to drive a Ferrari, which is land insights. It's like, go drive that camera, you go do some driving lessons, learn, and then hop in that Ferrari and you'll know how to wield the thing. You'll know, you know how to handle it. But what we see is these people come in, they're typically averaging yeah, quarter percent, maybe a third percent of response rate. They get on land insights, they're at you know a percent plus consistently response rate from the mailers because their pricing is so accurate. They're working in unpicked over markets and they're only taking shots on gold for properties that, that you know they really would want to buy. Days on market gets cut by usually about a third. They usually save about 10 to 15 hours a week. In fact, we've had some people say they say they're saving 20 plus hours a week by using land insights. Um and there's a community built into it, right? The community is really strong. There's an education component. Um, so yeah, not a pitch for Land Insights. This stuff can be replicated manually. I don't really know how you do the scrubbing manually. And frankly, it's so hard for me to comprehend. A lot of the market selection stuff you can do manually. The problem with that is your bias gets in the way because you only have to start, you have to start looking at things from a state-by-state -state level. And so people's hunch, their bias, they only start seeing what's in that bias, right? And that does get in the way of breaking into new untapped markets. Um, now, one thing that I'll share with you guys, if you guys want to get our um, seven figure market selection course for free, go over to landinsights.co. You guys can click on this join now um, and you guys can go get that for free. Uh, it's a really cool program. It just dives a lot deeper into our market selection strategies. Um, and then if you guys want to go and actually uh, apply to join Land Insights, you over here, you'll be routed to a quick onboarding form. Just want to figure out where you're at in the journey, what kind of deals you're doing. Make sure your business model actually aligns to what we're working on here. Really, we created this tool to service the business model that we teach inside of Leah, which is a mid-market acquisition heavy um, direct mail based uh, you know, land investing style. That's very niche. That's very, very, very particular. If you're the kind of person doing small dollar owner finance desert square deals, this ain't for you. And we're going to tell you that because I don't want people to get on here and spend money on something that doesn't doesn't deliver the results for them. So we do we look at every single one of these. We get half a dozen or so a day, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. And we review every single one. Um, once you go through this, if you try to check out uh, the, the right answers, apply, um, you'll get you'll be prompted to have the option to sign up for Land Insights if spots are still available, which at the time of this recording, there are. It's 421, so April 21st. Um, and we everything works in quarterly increments. So it's not a month to month program, it's a quarterly increment program. So you'll be paying three months in advance, but we don't want to incentivize the people coming on trying to steal our data, which fortunately there's slimy people out there that want to steal the data and then cancel our plan two days later. We don't roll like that. We actually kind of force you to stick around. Uh, once you sign up, you'll be uh, prompted to have an onboarding call with our team. We'll walk you through the platform, walk you through how we're using it, walk you through how to get the most value from it. Um, then you'll get access to the seven figure market selection program. You'll get access to uh, our uh, monthly uh, land insight team call, and you'll get access to the ever increasing updates and improvements that we're making. We've got an, uh, three engineers working on this essentially full time. Okay. We're a small shop. We're a small business. We've reinvested pretty much everything we've made in this business to make it better. And I think we've got a real opportunity to build the best tool in the land business. We're less than a year in. And frankly, I, I don't think there's anything out there that, that does this, that operates like this, that looks like this, that feels like this, that delivers this much value for the price point. And it's because we've just, everything that's, that we've made, we just pushed it back in. You can imagine having three engineers is not cheap. 
Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got so much ground to cover, so much that we're working on. And so your support means the world uh, because I think we've got a real opportunity to kind of revolutionize the land space and build something that's really, really impactful and that continues to serve uh, the people on the platform. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Some of the little ninja stuff that we're doing, there's actually a lot more that I can't talk about that we're doing as well that we'll eventually be making it to Land Insight, some stuff that would blow your mind. I feel like we're like in the, the, the land investing CIA, like we've got some some pretty secret crazy stuff that our team is using, that Ryland's team is using, that Kyle's team is using, you know, people that are on the Land Insights team that they have access to, that's unlike it, there's nothing out there like it. And eventually we'll be dripping this stuff out, adding it to Land Insights to continue to improve it. All right guys, take care of yourself, much love. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was valuable, hopefully it was fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourself.